Hello students, I am your primary science teacher. I hope you have enjoyed learning part one video on reproduction in flowering plants. Today, we are going to start the next part of it. Students, to improve our immune system, we eat plants and plant products in many ways. Large number of plants are eaten or destroyed by us every day. Still, there are plenty of plants everywhere. Do you know why? Because plants continue to grow like all other living organisms. Most plants grow from their seeds. The seeds under favorable conditions grow into small baby plant. This is known as seedlings. And the growing of new plant from the seed is called seed germination. So students, today we are going to learn about seed germination. A single plant produces many seeds, but all of them do not have a chance to grow or survive. Some of them are eaten by us, like rice seed, wheat seed, gram seed, etc. Some of them are eaten by the birds and other animals. While some of them may not get right condition to germinate, so they dry up and die. Only a few seeds succeed to germinate and produce new plants like parent plants. So some specific conditions are required by the seeds to germinate. These are enough water, proper sunlight, fresh air, fertile soil, and enough space. If a seed gets favorable conditions, it germinates soon. But have you ever thought, how does a tiny seed convert into a big tree? To know this, let us first understand about the structure of a seed. A seed has three important parts. Outer covering of a seed is called seed coat. It is a protective layer. The seed contains a small baby plant, which is known as embryo. And the third important part is two seed leaves that are also known as cotyledons. Cotyledons store food for the baby plants. Students, you can easily observe the seed parts by soaking seeds in water for overnight. So it's an activity time for all of you. Soak some gram seed in water for overnight and demonstrate the different parts of a seed like seed coat, embryo and cotyledons. As we have discussed earlier, cotyledons store food for baby plant. Some seeds have one cotyledons and some seeds have two cotyledons. On the basis of this, we have two types of seed. One is monocot seed. If a plant has mono, one cotyledon, it is known as monocot plant and the seed is known as monocot seed. These plants have fibrous root system maize, rice, wheat, barley are example of monocot seed while the second one is dicot seed. If a plant has two cotyledons, these are known as dicot plant and the seed is known as dicot seed. These plants have two tap root system, gram, pea, Beans are the example of dicot seeds. Now you can easily differentiate the seeds present at your home. Let's learn different stages in germination. In the first stage of germination, the seed absorbs water from its surroundings and get swollen. Then the seed coat breaks open and the root or the radical grows downward from it. Then 
the shoot or the plumule starts growing upwards which is which is later produces stem and leaves finally when the seedling grows green leaves it starts making its own food by the process of photosynthesis then the cotyledons dry and fall from the plant now it is an activity time for that first you have to take 3 gram seeds tie them to a plastic scale with cotton threads and put them in a glass tumbler which is half filled with water as you can see in picture for 2 to 3 days what will you observe you will observe that only middle seed is germinated because the upper seed has got only air but not water while the lower seed has got only water but not air so it proves that seed needs air water and suitable temperature for germination students have you seen such plants these are ferns and mosses they are non flowering plants they are not having flowers and seeds so they reproduce by tiny structure called spores about spores you will study in your higher classes students as you know seed needs adequate sunlight air water and space to grow into a healthy plant that's why nature helps in scattering the seeds and ensure that they do not grow too close to each other. The process by which seeds are scattered away from the mother plant is called seed dispersal. Seeds are dispersed in different ways. The agent that carry out dispersal are called agents of dispersal. Some seeds are dispersed by the wind, while some are dispersed by animal and humans. Some are by the water and some are dispersed by the explosion or bursting of fruits. First, we will discuss about the dispersal by wind. Seeds that are small in size and light in weight are dispersed by wind. They have fine, long hair or wings around them which help them to disperse easily cotton madar hiptage dandelion are dispersed by winds next one is dispersal by water the seeds of plants that grow in or near flowing water are generally dispersed by water these seeds or fruits have some special structures which help them to float on water. Coconut seed and lotus are the example of dispersal through water. Now, dispersal by humans and animals. Some animals like monkey, squirrel eat fruits from the plant and throw away their seeds these thrown away seeds after getting the proper condition germinate into new plant we also eat different types of fruits which we get from all over the country like nagpuri orange kashmiri apple malda mango we eat the fruit and throw their seeds nearby which is away from the place from where we get the fruits in this way seed also dispersed in next condition some fruits and seeds have hooks or spikes by which they stick to our clothes or some animals which have hairy bodies so they are carried to long distances away from their mother plants xanthium seeds spare grass tiger nail seeds are dispersed through animals. Birds also eat fruits and 
the seeds are dispersed through their droppings. And the last one is dispersal by explosion or bursting of fruits. Some fruits like peas, balsam and ladyfinger become dry and burst when they are ripe. Their seeds pop out and are scattered away in all directions. I think you would have understood the different mode of seed dispersal. Now, the importance of seed dispersal. Most important, it reduces competition among plants for resources like sunlight, water and minerals. Next, it reduces the chances of spreading of disease among plants. And it allows plants to grow in a wider area, so more likely to survive in event of a flood or fire. In this way, we can protect and disperse seeds. So when we grow crops in a large scale, it is known as agriculture. It is the science, art, and occupation of cultivating the soil, producing crops, and raising livestock. It is the world's largest and the most important industry. There are several steps involved in agriculture. These steps are known as agricultural practices. Some basic steps of agricultural practices are First, farmer prepare the soil by tilling and labeling and making it fertile. Then they sow the healthy seeds in fields. After that, farmer nurture the seedlings with water and manure. Then they kill the unwanted plants that grow with the main crops by spraying weedicides. They use insecticides and pesticides to control pests. Some mature crops are harvested by the farmers. Then the grains are separated from the shaft and husk by threshing and winnowing. Finally, the grains are stored and marketed by the farmers. In this way, most plants are grown by the farmers. But some plants are grown differently. As we have discussed, a ripe spacing is a major factor for plantation because it ensures the uniform availability of water, nutrients, and sunlight to the plants. For that, farmers use a unique technique in agriculture, that is transplantation. In this case, seeds are first sown in a nursery and then small plants called seedlings are transferred to the main field or further for further growth like tomatoes, chilies, etc. So students, I hope you have enjoyed this session. Thank you students.